All right, so in week two lesson, we're going to talk about geometric sequences in series. Uh, and the basic definition of a geometric sequence is the ratio between consecutive terms of a sequence So the ratio of consecutive terms of a sequence is constant. So your ratio is always going to be the same. So for instance, we could have a very basic uh, series or sequence. And our sequence would be this. Hopefully this is somewhat familiar to you, those numbers. But if you look at that sequence, you notice your ratio. And we always, when we're calculating the ratio, you always do the second one over the first. And it's going to be this ratio is 2 over 1, which equals 2. 4 over 2, 8 over 4, 16 over 8. And so this is our common ratio of this sequence. So that has a common ratio of 2 throughout it. And all I did is I multiplied each term by 2. You could also do something like this. You could have 9, 6, 4, 8 thirds, and so on. Well, to determine if this is a um, geometric sequence, we find the common ratio as well. 6 over 9. 3 over 9, 6 over 9 is the first ratio, and then 4 over 6, and then 8 thirds over 4. Well, if you start simplifying these, you see that every time they simplify, um, that becomes 8 twelfths, which is also 2 thirds, and so they all simplify to 2 thirds. Um, you can also have the, um, ratio, the terms don't all have to be the same sign. That's something different about um, geometric because you could you could your common ratio could be negative 2 instead of 2 like in the series I just did so your ratio actually can either be a positive number or a negative number depending if you notice these still start going are going up the way that you make a geometric series go down is by multiplying by something less than 1 okay the, the negative number just makes us telescope the sequence which means you go positive negative positive negative positive negative back and forth but as we um, go through and do this, we're going to try to learn things about them. Um, first, let's talk real quick about how you write these when you do geometric sequences before we talk about the series. Um, a geometric se sequence can always be written like this. The um, nth term um, of a sequence is always going to be able to be written uh, as, as you go through and do these, it's always going to be able to be written as the first term times whatever your ratio is, which in this case is r, right? We're just going to let ratio be r. And then that power is always going to be n minus 1. And the reason why is when we find the first term, it just needs to be t1, which means our ratio to some power has to be um, 1. Well, if you let n equal 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, so r to the 0 is 1, so you can see that t1 equals t1. So that means our sequence is always going to look like this, t1 plus t1 to the r plus t1 times r squared plus t1 times r cubed, and so on and so forth. And so we're going to go through and um, use that to help us find out things about a geometric series. A geometric series is just the sum of a geometric sequence. So for instance, if I wanted to find the sum of a geometric sequence, it would look something like this. It would just be pluses instead of just writing out the sequence. Now here's what's interesting. Normally when we're doing these, with the arithmetic sequences, we have to have an end. It has to be a finite series. Okay, so a finite series is a series with a specific number of terms. That's how we, when we found the sum of arithmetic series, we knew there had to be a certain number of terms. So we can do the same thing with geometric. However, we don't have to, and we'll talk about that in a second. So the se series with a specific number of terms is our finite series. Well, let's say we just want to find what is the sum of this series right here. Well, here's, what, here's how you figure it out. Write that series out like I did. And then we perform a little trick 
that's going to allow us to do something nice. And that trick is to multiply um, that um, uh, multiply our series by r. Well, if you notice, when I multiply t1 by r, I just get t1r. When I multiply t1r by r, I get um, t1r squared. And so if you notice, all that's happening is I'm moving these terms over 1. And so by, at the end, I'll get a t1 um, r to the n minus 1, but then out here I'll have a t1r to the n when I multiply this last one by n. Well, the reason we do that is that we want to subtract the two sequences. And if we subtract these two sequences, we get on the left side sn r um, sn minus rsn, which equals, well, all these terms cancel out. And so you're left with t1 minus t1 r to the n. Well, to solve this, we, we want to find solve for sn, so we factor out an sn, and we get 1 minus r equals t1 minus t1 r to the n all over um, 1 minus r. So finally, we factor out the t1, and we end up with this nice formula, and this formula will always find us the sum of a geometric sequence, series that is finite. Like I said, you can also find the sum of a geometric sequence that is infinite, but only if r, or the absolute value of r, is less than 1. And the reason this happens is, as you go through and you look at your, the formula I just gave you, which is t1 times 1 minus r to the n, you need to be remem memorizing this, times 1 minus r. Well, if you think about this, if r is something that's really small, um, so like, I don't know, anything that's small, but if you did in your calculator, like if r was like one-tenth, well, as n gets really, really big, one-tenth to the 500th power, if you typed it in your calculator, is something so minuscule that eventually we say that r to the n becomes zero. So that means the sum of an infinite series, so not s to the n, just s, because it's, it's an infinite, right? You could write an infin infinity sign there if you wanted, just turns out to be the t1 over 1 minus r. And so you do t1 over 1 minus r. That can give you the sum of an infinite series. It's a deceptively simple formula. You can do the same thing we did back here to find that formula, except that it just goes on forever. And so they, they cancel each other. Every term gets canceled out, and so you're just left with these terms. And you can simplify them in the same way. But whatever the case is, we have two nice formulas that we can use. This is for a finite series, when we know what n is. If it's an infinite series, then we can just ignore this term, and we get this formula. So those two formulas you need to have memorized, and in the next video I'll show you how to use those in solving some problems.